Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video I'm going to be going over the 26.5 update which will be coming to Road to Survival in the near future. It's going to be bringing with it some massive changes to the game including big updates to depots and wheels which we have all been waiting for so stay tuned for some craziness. We'll read through the intro and it says survivors with war of champions 4 and the end of 2020 fast approaching we've been reflecting on our past and planning for the future of road to survival over the last five years we've continued to evolve and grow the road to survival experience we've witnessed top factions battle for dominance in war of champions and seen the rise of cross-region play through leagues and tournaments six star and s-class fighters arrived to change the landscape of combat We've watched factions defeat Negan in Faction Assault and lay waste to their rivals in Walker Hordes. But most importantly, we've seen a passionate and dedicated group of players come together to form the Road to Survival community. And as we plan for the future, we want the next five years of Road to Survival to be an even better experience for the community and for the players. We think this means continuing to accomplish two key goals. First, and most importantly, we hear your calls for us to continue to update core features continue to make the game better and keep all parts of the game relevant and rewarding. Second, we need to continue to create new, fresh and exciting experiences and content. It is critical we accomplish both of these goals while ensuring the game is accessible and exciting to all players. It continues by saying we believe we've made major progress over the last year on these goals. We launched our War of Mercenaries update which made queuing significantly easier for all factions. We added new stronghold effects in Total War which breathed new life into the war. We upgraded the dossier with the level up and trainer update which made leveling your fighters significantly faster and easier. We introduced a rewarding battle pass, cracked down on exploiters and made progress on improving S-Class card availability. Every month we launched exciting and accessible events and competitions which introduced many players to powerful S-Class characters like Brutus, Barker, Ivanova, Aaron and Kenny. Overall we are very proud of the experiences we've delivered this year. It finishes by saying we believe we are only getting started, there are many more improvements we can make and new experiences we can create and we can't wait to start sharing with you what's coming next. Over the next few weeks and months we will be revealing some of the big things that are coming starting with our 26.5 release which we're excited to announce will launch in the coming weeks. In this update we want to further improve some of the features you already know including a core feature that has not been updated since launch town expansion we are adding access to 12 more spaces including the ability to add a third armory and fifth training ground the level cap on many buildings will be increased to level 30 with these updates food and material generation and storage can be significantly increased as can survivor storage level cap increase the player level cap will increase from 200 to 300 with increased rewards along the way. There are now exclusive avatars at levels 250 and 300, as well as a five star weapon parts, increased coin rewards and more. War Tower effects, following the success of the Total War event, we've continued to invest in a wide variety of stronghold effects and add variety to the war experience. Look forward to brand new war strongholds after the War of Champions. It does go on to talk about the depot and wheel changes. This does go into quite big depth. I'm going to look over a separate post where it lists a lot of the characters, but it says supply depot, addition of medals and four star weapon parts, greater variety of five star, five star ascendable characters, addition of six star characters, and an addition of S class cards. Survival Markers has the addition of legendary and universal trait trainers. Greater variety of 5 star, 5 star ascendables and 6 star characters. Medals crate to include greater quantities of legendary and essential medals and addition of S class cards as well. 5 star recruits and prestige recruits. Expanded and refreshed the pool of 5 star ascendables and 5 star characters. Addition of 5 star ascendable versions of S class characters that would mean that you would be able to pull 2000 S class cards with a 5 star token pool. Improved appearance rates of 5 star ascendable characters. 5 star recruits improved from 7% to 15%. Prestige recruits appearance rates improved from 7% to 20%. So there is an improved chance of actually getting a 5 star ascendable in these. Elite characters expanded and refreshed the pool of 5 star ascendable and 5 star characters. Removed 3 star fighters from the character pool. Improved appearance rates for 5 star and 5 star ascendable characters. 
Five stars are improved from 2.5% to 38%. Five star ascendable characters are improved from 1% to 2%. Now it does say that more details on these wheels can be read into, which I'll just check, but it does finalize this by saying the town expansion and level cap increase are just the beginning of what will be meaningful updates to many aspects of the game, including the world map, prestige, training grounds, courses, side missions, and much, much more. We're excited to tell you more about what we have in store very soon. Stay tuned because Conquest is imminent. So it does seem like there could potentially be a new game mode, a new battle mode. Conquest sounds quite PvP, like most of this game is based on PvP, but Conquest does sound like quite PvP based. So it would be interesting to see what that is. That will be in the future. That is not part of this update. This is just a teaser for you guys. But now we will click on that link for the depot and wheel update and we will go through the characters that are going to be available here. So first we'll look at the supply depot updates. There is slot one and it has got world energy, raid energy, war energy, and there is a second war energy here for some reason and survival road energy. I think maybe the second war energy is maybe meant to be territory energy. But I'm not 100% certain here. We'll have to see. But the in-stock of World Raid and War is going to be 5. And then in-stock of the second war, which I think would be Territory, and Survival Road Energy refills will be 1 each. Slot 2 will have Megans, possibly, from 1 to 5. Liliths, 1 to 2. And Ulysses, 1 to 2. Slot 3 will have Ascendance Medals and Legendary Medals. It does say Silver Crate and Gold Crate. I'm not really quite sure what this means. Whether it's a Choice Crate or... I'm not actually 100% certain here. It could mean that you don't instantly claim it. It's not too clear what this means here, whether it could have legendary medals and ascendance medals in there for the silver ones, or it just means legendary medals are gold and ascendance medals are silver. But there is going to be a slot three with just ascendance medals in there. Slot four is just going to be full of loads of trainers, Brady's, Basil's, and Benny's, just going from one to 10 based on the amount of characters like Benny's one to two, Basil's one to three, and Brady's is one to 10. Slot 5 seems to be more of an armory slot, and it does have the 4-star weapon listed here. They might list the weapons that are involved in this, we'll have to wait and see, but the rest of it is just going to be bits and pieces which you need in the armory just to upgrade your weapons. Some quite high things here, because there is things like cutting fluid, polishing kits, duct tape. It isn't the very top end, you're not going to get any of the varnish and so on, but it is still pretty good stuff. In slot 6, you are going to get a 4-star fighter and a 6-star fighter non-ascendable. In slot 7, you are going to get a 5-star ascendable fighter or a 6-star fighter. And in slot 8, you are going to get S-class cards up to 5 in stock. There are 3 ranged versions, 1, 3, 5, and there are 3 melee versions, 1, 3, and 5. Now, if we check the S-class card choice box that is in that supply depot crate, you, are, you can get Pete, Shane, Axel, Gentleman, Priya, Princess, Mercer, Beta, and Marcus. So you could potentially get up to 1,000 of their cards every week if you manage to get the five each time. Then we have the Melee Crate, which has Arav, Davy, Rosita, AJ, Storm, Eugene, Rick, Kerian, and Javier. So again, up to 1,000 cards potential every time this resets. It is a guaranteed S-Class card slot. So they will always be S-Class card crate there. It does say an additional Pete Anderson collection will be added to the museum. And I would assume it would be for two five stars and an S-Class because I have read ahead. Looking at the survival markers update, we do have five star fighters, non-ascendable, four star weapons and six star fighters in there in slot one. In slot two, we do have the same items that we had before, which is the upgrade items for the specific characters that are in the actual depot, for instance, SR Zeke needs multi-tool knives because he's a five-star and the four-star versions of characters would need sleeping bags. I think the six-star fighters need both so, and there's no change in the quantity and stock here. Slot three is going to be mod scrap and it seems to be the same as it was before, 2.5K, 3.5K and 5K. No change to the quantity or the stock. Slot four will now be a mystery mod box and it's been updated and now remove the bronze mod. So it's a guaranteed silver mod, then gold mod, and then potential platinum mod. They may have changed the odds of this, like they listed the odds change in the first post. We'll read on ahead just to see if there's any info on that. Slot five is going to be another trainer slot. Five, three, two, one on the Brady's, three, two, one on the Basil's, two, one on Lilith, 
2-1 on Ulysses. So quite similar to the trainer update for Supply Depot. Slot 6 is going to be an S-Class card choice box range, an S-Class card choice box melee. It will just be random which one it's going to be. You can have a maximum of one of these appear in here. Slot 7 is going to be an Ascendance crate with 50 Legendary plus 35,000 Ascendance medals. Slot 8 is going to keep the random Platinum mod box. It's also going to add a Platinum mod box that is guaranteed attack set, defense set, crit set, or HP set. So eliminating some of the RNG here. Now, because the S-Class card choice box resets in this depot every single day, you'll be able to get 100 of the S-Class cards every single day. The range version of these characters are going to be Raulito, Secretary Guo, Minerva, Trader, Imani, Negan, Wangfar, Frost, Tiffany, and Shiva. The melee cards are going to be Heng Yen, Jackie, Tanya, Lewis, Mr. Lu, Lao Po, Deyu, Clementine, Mateo, and Alpha. Like I said, you will be able to claim 100 of these per day as long as you select that crate. It is a choice crate, so you can choose whichever character you want. And with the five star recruits wheel update this is where things get interesting this is why i think they're going to be adding a two six star p plus the 6k cards that would be required to get a normal s class character because they are adding five star ascendable p in this wheel as an s class five star ascendable they are also adding the s class five star ascendable versions of raulito negan rosita nor laupo rick michonne priya and mercer they are also having extra and maybe different five-star ascendables in here. Remember, the five-star ascendable odds have increased to, I believe it was 20% in this wheel. I would have to go back and check. But as I scroll down, you can see all the characters that are going to be five-star ascendables added. So it does look like if you do pull one of those characters as a five-star ascendable, that's going to be like, like I said, picking up 2k cards instantly. And just to confirm the rates of 5-star Ascendables dropping from the 5-star Recruit Wheel, it's improved from 7% to 15%. Prestige Recruits has been increased to 20%. And the Prestige Wheel is where we're going to look to next as the Trader, Axel, Tanya, Princess and Frost are going to be added as 5-star Ascendable characters of S-Class characters. You are going to have a 20% chance of pulling an Ascendable and you could get one of these characters. There are also going to be a bunch of Ascendables in here that you might like. These are non-S-Class characters, so even if you do see the same names like Javier at the top here, it is a 5-star Ascendable Javier, not an S-Class Javier. As I scroll down more, you can see other characters. Long list. There is also an Elite Character Wheel update. Here, there are no S-Class characters available within the 5-star Ascendables, but the 5-star Ascendable chance is only 2%. So this is moreover, we're going to give you a lot of tokens and you could potentially get lucky. And I do see the elite character will is still more of an entry level will. And you can see the characters that are going to be involved in this will as five star ascendables. If you have been looking to get some of these characters for collections and stuff, it's great that they've been added for you. I'm happy for you. But otherwise, it's not going to add too much other than that. It does go on to say five stars and four star fighters will be present in this will but are not displayed above. We hope you enjoy these changes. The best, the Walking Dead RTS team. So personally, I'm really excited to see these changes because 2,000 cards just off one pull on a five-star or prestige wheel could make a big difference for someone. The change in tactics now, however, is means you're going to have to hold on to those cards for a very long time. If you get 2,000 cards... You shouldn't be picking up the five star ascendable of a character. You should be waiting until you get about 6,000, maybe even 8,000, maybe even 10,000 until you start claiming five star ascendables because you could get one of the five star ascendables from that wheel, which would be 2K cards, and you would have wasted a museum hand in if you did it the other way. So definitely change up how you do things. I've done it that way anyway, just because of the introduction of the battle pass. It just made sense. Some of those characters actually can make a quite a big difference, and some of them are actually pretty fun by the looks of things. However, just a slight bit of a downer on this entire update. The last time we had a major wheel update where it looked like there was massive progress made with the wheel updates, Within a week, we had S-Class characters. This is the only fear I have when it comes to these major updates where it looks good, is that the next thing could be coming in just to make it look terrible. Hopefully with future changes and the potential of this Conquest update that they're talking about, it doesn't make these great changes in these depots and wheels look absolutely irrelevant. Fingers crossed, because as it looks on face value, it looks really good. 
Do tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, though, guys. That is the end of my video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.